Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, I'm Francis McCarthy. The painting I'm bringing you today has the uh, no doubt temporary title of Beach Number Four. <laughs> um, painted this, just finished it yesterday. Um, and you see that little area there, it's like a little cliff or whatever. Um, in the reference image, which you can see in the members area, if you are so inclined, that's uh, six bucks a month, and uh, you get to see the reference images, color mixing sessions, 4K, and no ads there. Anyway, um, you could see in the re that 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 was really this huge, huge triangle of orange, and um, in the old days, I probably just would have painted it, and at some point uh, down uh, down the road, I would have noticed that it was a huge triangle of orange, and that it was messing up my painting. Um, maybe I would have tried to fix it, or uh, maybe I would have done what I did and made a mental note. Uh, to you got to watch out for things. You got to watch out for most everything in the photo. So if you're making uh, paintings from your photos, you need to really, uh, you need to have a, have, have a care. Um, that needs to be designed, okay? It's got to be designed way more than it needs to pull in every aspect of the photo into your painting. The photo should be functioning uh, pretty much strictly as reference only, yeah. Uh, so my underpainting uh, I did with some burn number and the reason for that was I knew I would be doing the underpainting one day and uh, the color the next day which is what I'm doing and uh, I like burn number because it dries quick so even pretty much dry to the touch later on in the day uh, and the the red tone coming through uh, supports most landscape uh, paintings the exception would be like something that's very very blue very very cold uh, you don't need that warm uh, brownish red coming through there, but uh, even in skies, it's fine. I was working on a painting a day, a sky, uh, doing the sky portion. And uh, yeah, uh, sometimes you got to slow down and, and fill up a few holes, but for the most part, you can leave a little bit showing through, which is really something you, you want to consider. Um, say you're working on white, you know. Um, and those little bits peeking through, you're going to have to go through and painstakingly plug them all in. Yeah. Um, and that's really going to choke a lot of the immediacy and expressive quality out of your painting. So, something to think about. That's one of the reasons why I consider the color I paint on to be one of the really critical critical aspects. Now, talking about design, this uh, group of trees. Um, this is a type of tree out here called a Pahutakawa. And they have a uh, really pretty red flowers this time of year. It's known as the New Zealand Christmas tree. Very complicated tree to paint. So, as complex as this looks, let me tell you, I have uh, simplified it immensely. And then, this is the other thing. You know, you want to simplify, you want to design, but you don't want too much artifice. So, I do love me a nice S curve. I'm a big fan of uh, Alphonse Mucha. Or Mucha, I've heard it pronounced all kinds of different ways. Um, and so that doesn't form what I do there. Um, but uh, you don't want to get too crazy with all that stuff. I like things to look somewhat realistic. Yeah. Um, so the area you just saw me painting in some darks, that was a bit of a challenge because there's a lot of things coming all together in that one point. You have the the water from the uh, ocean coming in towards the trees. You've got all the tree trunks. You've got a bit of cliff. It's all happening there. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't really know exactly how I was going to resolve it. But what I ended up doing was just smacking a bit of uh, dark there and a bit of green and covering it up with some foliage. And that worked very well. So, hey, whatever you got to do. Um, I've been doing a lot of beach paintings lately, maybe you've noticed. I've got a show coming up here in New Zealand, January something. 
18th or something like that and uh, oh, you know these things go in roundabouts like every now and again I'll feel like painting uh, it wasn't that long ago I was doing all these skies uh, paintings which are very related very similar uh, you would see by the way in the members area this is about four hour uh, video and um, yeah so a little extra work put in uh, mostly because of the complexity of the tree shapes and getting them to look right uh, I ended up um, also injecting some of these little red flowers uh, into the trees which uh, I like to put little dots of red that's a great tip for you too by the way you know uh, you can just put some random little red dots in your landscape and watch it just go pop you know just those little bits of red will add a lot of life you know especially uh, so many landscapes is green on green on green on green uh, I should point out to those of you that might be new we get new folks all the time my main green is made from acrylide yellow uh, and uh, black and that that green is modified and adjusted with colors like burnt sienna or alizarin crimson or burnt umber or oh yellow orange yellow ochre any one of these uh, a raw umber any one of these will be used to modify that basic green in ways that's lighter darker and of course change up the color now pretty soon here you're going to see an ad for my book um thank you to those of you that have bought it i'm going to be shipping out uh a bunch uh, tomorrow and uh, I really appreciate your uh, support and I think you will enjoy the book which basically consol consolidates uh, you know 12 years of um, uh, approaching tonalism and so the book's coming up five four three two one do you want to learn to paint tonally do you want to paint better Tired of trying to find the info that you need? There are hundreds of videos on this channel. You could watch for days and not find the info you need until now. Introducing my new book, Landscape Painting the Tonalist Way. Everything you want to know in one place. Order your copy today, Landscape Painting the Tonalist Way. Click the link below this video or visit my site, landscapepainter.co.nz. And please do so. I just did a reorder. So um, the first uh, amount I printed was 50. And uh, we're closing in on 30 or something sold. Um, so um, some of you have asked why not just do the Amazon thing. I may indeed do that. But uh, I'm definitely trying to seek a real publisher. I'm an old guy and I like real publishers who publish real books that you can find in real bookstores and all that uh, but if I can't make that happen I'll probably go with the uh, Amazon fulfillment thing so I'm looking into it but meanwhile I'm I'm taking orders for these by the way every book is signed and numbered since it's a limited uh, it's a limited thing so it's a bit like uh, um, well it's gonna be pretty special at some point down the road you will have a signed and numbered copy of my book yeah and who knows uh, I'm not too concerned because I created this book for uh, for the ages it's designed not to um, go out of style it's designed to uh, provide you the information you might need to paint in a tonal manner uh, forever you know as long as you have the book yeah now you notice that I didn't say this wasn't uh, this was just a landscape painting I feel this is definitely cleaving to a tonal sort of approach and that's a kind of subtle definition um, several of the last ones I did I would say no but uh, here I kind of am um, skating in that area where I definitely feel it's still tonal and I was pretty happy with this so I was looking at a lot of different skies now you know it's not very often that the sky in your reference photo is gonna be as very inspiring so a lot of times I'll swap out most every time I will swap out uh, in that reference image uh, a different sky and here I wanted something that had blue blue uh, sky with you know gray and white clouds um, when I do that sort of thing though I love to play the um, the cool grays off the warm grays 
I was working on one a day. I'll start injecting little bits of purple or lizard crimson into things. I'm not getting so carried away that you're going to go, hey, is this a dawn scene or something like that? But I won't hesitate to do that too if I want. I'll do whatever I want. I'm a, you know, I got an artistic license. It's right here in my wallet. <laughs> Uh, some of the uh, younger people haven't heard of that term artistic license, but Basically an artistic license means that you as the artist uh, can change anything you want in your art You have full license to do so uh, Because like our creator um, Your creations are yours and you can make them any way you want uh, and hopefully you are making lots of paintings and uh, will be continuing to do so through this holiday season. Uh, what is today? Today is the 13th and uh, out here in uh, New Zealand it's, uh, it's summertime. Definitely coming up on the solstice and uh, this country pretty much shuts down for the, you know, whole second half of December, first half of January. Yeah. Which is all good. They know how to have a, a good, uh, you know, good time with their families, and uh, uh, God bless them. Um, let's see other challenges. I thought, uh, you know, those little waves—they really make a painting. Uh, they really make a beach scene. Uh, getting the right tone on the distant hills was a bit of a challenge. I feel that looks good. Um, yeah, mostly the biggest challenge was the tree, and that by the time uh, that that orangey tones you can see I've already put some rusty darker tones darker rusts into that cliff um, I increased the amount of grass uh, which was like beach type grass um, oh here's a tip for you since you've been good enough to get 12 minutes in you know when you and I was talking about this a lot in while I was doing this in the members area I remember because it wasn't that long ago I did this painting um, you know, you're, you're inclined to do all these um, vertical strokes. Stroke, 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 stroke. Oh, that's grass. That's what grass is. But, yes, you do want a few vertical strokes. But really, you want to think more in terms of shapes, a mass of grass. And, and a lot of times, my absolute favorite way to paint grass is using the side of my brush, not the tip. You know, you can see there, it gives you a kind of a grassy feel. Um, I look at some of my older work and some sometimes about the only thing I don't like is the overly vertical approach to grasses, you know, with too many separate independent strokes. You want a more mass approach with a few little vertical strokes cutting through and um, that's a good tip for you, I think. Uh, another tip, um, okay, so great thing about painting trees, you know, is you've got this brown from the board already coming through so you could almost leave a lot of that alone uh, which I did I just brought up certain aspects um, again I was uh, very challenged with like uh, all these twisty intertwined um, well it's tree trunk but a Pahuta Kawa could have like you know 8 to 20 different trunks coming up from the base um, it needs to be simplified, but it also needs to read as a Pahutakawa. Uh, it's very popular, uh, a very popular, very interesting tree here. They grow right out here, uh, right you know, right in the coast. Apparently, saltwater don't bother them at all. Um, I've seen them go right up to the water. But um, anyway, I can see we're getting pretty close to the end of this video, and uh, I sure appreciate you. I sure appreciate you watching the whole video. Uh, this painting will be for sale in my store, a little less than the last couple, so it's not that not that large. Um, and I wanted to give myself a little break. Uh, when I work large, it, it definitely is a, more of a strain on me. Um, but I'm getting better at it, so um, there you go. That's good to support yourself as an artist. If you're pushing into new territory, don't just keep pushing. Every now and again, make a big push. It's a great tip at the end for you, by the way. Make your big push, but then, you know, go ahead and try something you're real comfortable with. Like, I like the smaller sizes. I'm very comfortable at them. Uh, I remember uh, as I'm painting this going, ah, oh, yeah, I like painting this size. <laughs> anyway, until I come back with another painting demonstration, a video painting demonstration for your edification and enjoyment, please 
do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And God bless you and your family. See you next week with another one. I'm not sure what, oh, I know what that's going to be. It's going to be another beach, but different. They're all different. Anyway, see you later.